It's weird to say that Unreal has created the holy grail of facial motion capture, but they've created the holy grail of facial motion capture. What's going on everyone? I'm Sam, creative director for Rococo, and today we're gonna talk about the crazy breakthrough that Unreal has achieved in facial motion capture, namely the addition of monocular or single camera video to get facial mocap quality like this in MetaHuman Animator, which is absolutely nuts. In today's video, we're gonna talk about why this is such a huge deal and how to get this all working with your Rococo headcam, which is the perfect product for this solution. Super lightweight, HD video, you can wear it in your head, you're completely wireless, you can move around, it plugs into an Android. This workflow is amazing and I cannot wait to share it with people. Without further ado, let's jump into it. So the bones of this workflow won't change anytime soon, I think, but 6.1 is due to come out pretty soon and we have Unreal Fest happening next week. So my guess is there's gonna be some subtle changes to both at least the engine and probably some parts of this workflow. We're in a preview version, so whenever you're in a preview version, things can go weird, things can go wrong. Just keep an eye out for that and I'm sure most of the stuff will be fixed in 6.1. So why is this such a big deal? Basically, it's because in order to use MetaHuman Animator, especially as a pro Consumer, as someone who doesn't have, you know, tens of thousands of dollars to spend on facial motion capture, and you still want good facial mocap for your metahumans, you've had to use an iPhone. And this has been really great, honestly, because most people have iPhones. They're not that heavy if you're putting them on a helmet in front of your face, and it works very well. You get high quality motion capture from it. However, now you can use any flat video, and that means you can use a webcam or a GoPro, or you could still use your iPhone on a helmet, but you just use a you know a flat video. You could turn the phone around and not have to use the true depth sensor. So the fact that you can use any type of 2D video is really exciting for everyone, but for Rococo headcam users, it's especially exciting. And this is kind of why we designed this for use cases like exactly what Unreal Engine has built in to their MetaHuman animator. So really at the core of it, it just comes down to weight and comfort. And while having a phone out in front of your face is also fine, there is a little bit of fatigue and it does change the way that you move your body a little bit because you have this weight hanging out. And when you use devices like the Rococo headcam that are just super duper light, you get a much more honest and accurate performance from yourself or from your actors. And all of that without sacrificing the quality of the end product. The actual motion capture coming out of this system is just fantastic. The processing speed is less. They've just done a really great job. So let's actually look at the workflow now. And at the end of the video, I'll go through how to connect up some of your Rococo mocap. Okay, let's get into the actual workflow. So the first thing we need to do is just record our mocap. So I've already got my suit on and connected to Rococo Studio, and I'll put on my head cam afterwards. Make sure that the head sensor is attached to the helmet, not to the headband that it comes with. Then I'll take the USB-C cord from the head cam and plug it into my Android. I'm just using a free USB camera app that I got from the Play Store, but you can use whatever app that will show external cameras. Once it's on and everything is looking good, I will adjust it so that my eyes are fairly level with the camera. I've found that you can get better results that way. Then I'll hit record on whatever camera app I'm using on my Android and in Rococo Studio at the same time. And I'll make sure to do a little sync point at the beginning of my recording. We won't watch the whole thing, but after this recording is done, I would just clean up the mocap footage in Rococo Studio as I normally would, and then export it out to Unreal Engine for later in the workflow. Okay, so here we are in a brand new file. The UI has changed a little bit, but we're gonna start by enabling some plugins. So we'll go to plugins, type in MetaHuman, and just turn on everything. I just do this to be safe. You probably don't need every one of these, but it doesn't hurt. In particular, you need the MetaHuman Animator Depth Processing. That is the most important one for this workflow, but just turn them all on. We have to do a restart. You'll have to do a couple of these restarts because the next thing we're gonna do is add our MetaHuman. I like to add the MetaHuman before we get to the video processing and you'll see why in a second. I'm gonna select this MetaHuman Lexi. The process for adding a MetaHuman is the same as it's always been, but I like to go in and then open up my MetaHuman and just to make sure all the textures load and to select the LOD sync, set that to zero, which will mean that I'm always using the highest level of detail. Then I'll compile and save and do another restart. 
Once you're back, we're gonna go to tools and open up the live link hub. So this is where all of the live real-time streaming stuff is gonna be happening, but also the capture manager has moved here. So we'll go to this dropdown, select capture manager, then go to add device, mono video ingest, and then we'll select it and go to our take directory. So this is where we've taken our footage from our phone, sent it over to the computer somehow and put it in a folder. And here, once you've selected that folder, you can grab multiple clips or just a single clip in this case, add it to the queue and then start it. And this is going to ingest that footage into your project so we can then use it for a MetaHuman performance. Once we're done, this new capture folder will show up and we can go into our mocap folder and then go to MetaHuman, MetaHuman performance. We'll open that up and dock it. And the first thing we'll do is go over to input type and instead of depth footage and not audio, we're gonna select monocular footage. Then we'll go to our footage capture data and select our clip that we're gonna use to process. And here we have our clip. Everything plays back super quickly, which is so great. We have a few more settings hiding in the details panel here that I just need to drag this down for. The most important of which is the visualization mesh. So this is why we added our MetaHuman earlier. We want to already have the MetaHuman in the project so we can see what this is going to look like on our MetaHuman. Then we'll go to head movement mode and disable it. We're not tracking head movement because we're going to be using some body motion capture later. The last thing we'll do is go to advanced and here we can enable neutral pose calibration. Now, sometimes I use this, sometimes I don't, but basically if you remember to do a neutral pose, so just a pose where your face is relaxed, you can go to that frame, enter it in, and it will in theory help the accuracy of, I've actually found that not using in neutral pose can sometimes give you a better result. I think it just depends on the take. Next, we're just gonna hit process, and I'm gonna run this in real time. You can see that my mouse is, is moving. This is, this is how fast it processes, I, th which is really bananas. I mean, this MetaHuman animator used to crash my computer, and so they've obviously done a lot of work on the processing or just it takes a lot less when you're dealing with these you know flat 2D files. Let's listen back to a part of this because we have the audio from the video file as well. So we can play all this in the timeline. Binocular video to MetaHuman animator pipeline. Basically, what I'll... everything looks good. Next, we'll go to export animation. I'm just going to put it in my mocap folder and leave everything as default face archetype skeleton. Hit yes. And we'll let this process. This can take a moment, but it should be done pretty quick. And then you'll have your facial animation file right here. And this can go on any type of MetaHuman, any different MetaHuman you have. I just like having the MetaHuman I'm gonna be using as my visualization mesh. If we want this mocap on our MetaHuman, we just need to add her into the scene. We'll create a new level sequence and change the FPS to 24. Then we'll add our MetaHuman into our sequence delete the face control rig because we want to add an animation and then go select our animation from the drop down. If we double click on the track, we can expand out the timeline. And then if we play it back, everything just works right out of the box with your MetaHuman. Next, I just want to add the body animation. So something to note here in Unreal 6.0 preview, I think the retargeter is a little bit bugged. So I actually did my body retargeting using the same normal retargeting process that we use in our other workflows on YouTube. But I did that in a 5.5 project and then I migrated that animation over to this project. I'm sure in 6.1, this process will be fixed, but that's how I got my body mocap into the preview. Then it's just a matter of syncing up the body and the face using that sync point, which is why I always make sure to try and put in a sync point. It's really difficult to match these up without something like that. And then you've got everything running great. And I'll fast forward through setting up my scene a little bit more, but let's watch through, you know, the entire clip of what we got. And this is without any editing to the facial motion capture data. It's very easy to go in and do additive editing for the facial mocap, I just didn't, because I think it's valuable to see what you can get just raw out of the system with no editing. And I think the results are just so impressive. So let's take a look. So that was me just getting a little sync point to try to test out 
the new Unreal Engine monocular video to MetaHuman Animator pipeline. Basically, what all that means is that you can now just take a regular flat 2D video and feed it into MetaHuman Animator, and you get facial motion capture as good as this, which is absolutely crazy that you can get this quality just with a regular video. And what it also means is that this workflow is perfect for the Rococo headcam, which gives you an HD video and is super lightweight and allows you to be wireless. So let's test it out a little bit, but uh, it's so light, it's much better than having an iPhone in front of your face, which that was good too, but this is, this is better because it's just lighter and I can do this and it doesn't hurt. Crazy, it just feels so much more natural. Let's go put it on a MetaHuman. And that is the whole workflow for the monocular single camera solution for MetaHuman Animator. It's so great. I hope that everyone goes out and has a lot of fun. I hope this video was helpful. If you want to know more about the Rococo head cam, head down to the links in the description below or head to our website. We're going to be doing lots more around this as this is just such a great workflow for Rococo users. And, you know, we want to make sure everyone is supported as they start playing around with it. So put any questions down in the comments below and we'll see you in the next video. Bye.